Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Gemini. If Gemini is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. All right, let's see what do these, what do these tea leaves have to say today? Okay. Can you hear the cat over there eating her lunch? <laughs> and so our card for today is the death card. Um, you know, and uh, can be a very difficult card. It also can be um, a really good sign that a bad situation is over, that we are moving through some blockages. So worry not. This might be a really nice energy to have. Also, it's just about... It's just about Halloween, so I'm not surprised that we have this kind of this kind of um, death energy. Okay. Okay, so I want to start here. We have. Uh, we have a form, a person, a being right here in this emotional area, reaching up into this metaphysical, um, zone here on the rim. Um, the head looks not unlike an ibis. So I do think we have an appearance of Thoth or Thoth, however you like to say it. Um, this is, uh, a god that is related to psychopomps. Um, psychopomps are entities, deities, um, energies, whatever you like to call it, uh, that help bring people from their death, from their physical form, uh, into the other side, um, into the other or underworld, um, to the place in Egyptian mythology where they um, get their souls weighed. Now, that's only one myth, right? So, um, but psychopomps do span uh, a variety of mystery religions. So, um, you know, one aspect of those. The other uh, main ones that I'm looking at here are uh, God of the Sciences, God of Magic, and um, and a lot of other things really too. Uh, but here I'm looking at this, I'm seeing we have that death energy. Um, we have likely parts of self falling away going into this new year soon. Um, probably some amount of self-reflection. Um, I see the hand raised and often this reminds me of the glyphs uh, where deities are writing or the um, scribes are writing upon the wall. So they would, it's kind of meta. <laughs> they would have glyphs of, um, of deities and beings. Um, uh, actually, you know, carving the glyphs or um, inscribing things. And so, uh, you know, I think that this is a good time for you to be writing about maybe your goals, maybe kind of working on memoirs or journaling, um, processing some of the things that have gone on in this past year, you know, and... Uh, Ultimately, I think it's important for you, Gemini, to feel like you have a space to tell your story. Um, I think that, you know, it, it can be 
difficult to carry with you um, parts of yourself that um, maybe you have not told you know maybe it's not part of your public persona um, something that you keep to yourself or to your close friends and family and of course we all have private lives and we all have things that um, we don't share widely but I think it can be uh, really important for us to um, go through the ritual of telling our stories of writing out our thoughts and our feelings our emotions now you don't have to share this with anybody and you certainly don't have to keep it um you know it's i think there's been a long tradition um almost kind of romanticized of writing um your you know your stories your um journals diaries uh, your happenings and then burning them, right? Um, releasing yourself of them. And um, I think that this maybe would be um, something to consider, right? Something um, to uh, lighten your heart a bit, okay? Um, maybe even something that I should, I should try doing. Okay, so, oh my goodness. We have kind of a, I really, I love this image here. We have, um, now we have a person standing here, right? And they're, kind of head is turned this way, their arm is up, and then we have kind of these um, emanations coming from, and I think we might have a visit from TT here. Don't pull on that. Come over here. Come on. Don't pull on my tablecloth, miss. Come on. Over here. Oh. Okay. Um, so anyways, uh, we have kind of hand up in these emanations, okay? Something very magical. The energies that you are putting out there, manifesting. Um, you know, I think that you really are in a introspective place, but I also think that there is just a sense of uh, ma alignment with something almost, it's not necessarily like a supernatural feeling, but kind of, I think, just so in line with your power, right? And the feeling that you are um, kind of breathing things into existence, right? You, you are taking those hopes, those dreams, um, you know, your wants, desires, and finding a way to make that alive in your life. And these can be little things, they can be big things, but I think you feel quite connected. Um, and I look at the, when I'm looking at the little, the little scene within, uh, we have an I and a W here. Okay, but I also see it looks like two beings, one kind of on their knees looking up in a devotional um, posture, and the other one almost looks as if they are singing. And so um, I feel that there really is this pull towards um, kind of uh, um, ceremonial uh, acts of devotion right going to church maybe um, mass or um, some kind of uh, ritual performed um, you know there's a lot of different festivals and and um, public uh, celebrations of the holidays coming up and um, you know, I think that maybe you are drawn to these more 
uh, physical representations of your faith or um, your spirituality. Uh, even if you've never really partaken, it might be a nice time to try something new, right? Um, maybe having like a, a fire outside uh, for Halloween or one of the other surrounding late harvest festivals that are going on. Um, you know, some kind of uh, honoring of your dead, your, um, your transitioned people, um, you know, making offerings, votive objects, and so on. Uh, you know, and this may be, sometimes it can feel, if you haven't, if you have no background, or you haven't kind of, um, experienced some, a religion, or, um, an esoteric system, or, um, magical system where you partake in these kinds of things it can feel maybe a little bit strange um but i do think that there really is something to putting your intentions your love um your you know well your well wishes your um prayers and all these kinds of things into a physical act okay even if it's just leaving flowers at a grave or, um, you know, putting out some kind of fruit. Uh, and I like to do things uh, near the doorways of the home um, to, appease, <laughs> to appease the household spirits and the backyard spirits, you know, for protection and safety and, um, and uh uh, abundance and, you know, good health and all these things. Uh, and there are a lot of, there are a lot of ways. I know, um, my father, he used to leave tobacco places as offerings when he would take natural materials or if he had some kind of revelation somewhere, a vision, um, that was a, that was an important ritual for him. And, um, and, and, you know, so on, um, there are a lot of ways to express yourself. It doesn't have to be anything ornate or complicated. It can be very, very small, you know, and quiet. Um, but I do think that there's a pull towards this feeling for you. I think, you know, well, I think, I know that, uh, Gemini people are, um, people who, um, kind of, dance between those places the here and the and the elsewhere right um there is kind of a innate magical um quality about gemini people there is definitely um the ability to balance both places and to walk between and um you know hi hello and Pudgy agrees with me. And so, um, you know, I think when you have these moments where, um, you know, you, the, the Aether is talking to you. What are you doing? Are you going to come down? <laughs> All right. Come on, buddy. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, so, um, you know, I think that it is worth even just considering even um, taking some notice to um, this energy, okay? And let's see. I look at this up here and I really, I see almost kind of a beast with its mouth open, kind of running and a person behind it. Um, you can see here kind of the legs and the body, oops, the legs and the body. And, you know, ultimately I think through, uh, in some ways abandoning whatever it is that is, um, 
Paul, I almost feel like there's something that has you kind of upset and twisted up in your physical life, your mundane life. I think maybe something pretty silly, something petty, um, being at odds with someone, probably somebody that, um, you know, you don't find very likable. It's just, you know, maybe they're, they have a competitive nature, they're jealous or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but it leaves you with foul feelings. And I f believe it probably leaves them with some foul feelings as well. But I also think that um, by engaging with this energy, it gives them a feeling of power, right? And, um, and I feel like by turning away from that interaction, that, uh, you know, that mess, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, you're better off looking into, um, your magical places, your, your sectors of creativity, again, manifestation, um, creating ritual, partaking in ceremony, and so on. Um, following your faith and and um, your love for the divine and, and all of these things, I think this is kind of that exit from those bad moods that kind of arise from um, this, you know, kind of frivolous thing that's going on. And I think really, you know, um, oftentimes when we have people like this in our lives, the best thing we can do is disengage from it, but also try to remember that, um, anybody that goes out of their way to really, um, try to, you know, pick at you or, um, make you feel, um, you know, hurt in some way or, you know, knock you down a little bit, um, this person is living in a place of pain and, um, it doesn't make their actions okay, but we know that this is somebody who, um, is not living well. <laughs> so the best we can usually do is, uh, you know, say a prayer for them and, um, and turn away from all of it. Okay. And so let's see, what else do we have? Now I see uh, this little um, formation here and it looks like a person kind of in a fetal position. And I look at this and I think this is very much about um, going through a period of kind of incubation, right? Of kind of going back to that um, symbolic womb, um, taking time to really rest and um, allow yourself to travel through your thoughts, your dreams, your impressions. Um, you know, I think with the seasons really getting into full swing now, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you're definitely going into winter soon. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm sure it's already peak summer. <laughs> it's probably summer forever down there. I don't know, but... Um, either way, it's hot. I'm sure you'll be spending some time inside, um, trying to stay cool. So, uh, you know, either way, a good time to shut off the world, if even for a couple hours and allow yourself to, you know, drift a little bit. And if you have access to it, maybe doing one of those like sensory tanks or whatever, where you, uh, float in the salt water. Um, I hear those are pretty interesting. Um, so, uh, other than that, we have three stars aligned. And so I feel there will be three blessings that are very per perceivable, not just, you know, little tiny, um, I made it, well, it's not very, that's not tiny, but I was going to say, I made it home. I made it home safely. Those are the biggest blessings, aren't they? But we take them for granted because hopefully that happens more than not. Um, but I do think that these will be blessings that are very apparent to you and, um, they will come one after another. Okay. And then we're going to look at the dreamers deck 
40 affirmations for pursuing your dreams. I know collection. Okay, so I'm just going to flip through until it feels right. We'll flip it over and it says, I know that I must stay in the present moment to enjoy the journey. I am right here. Yeah. You know, and I think with that, um, that formation in the fetal position, definitely, um, a sense of being present in that um, restful, in that traveling through, um, you know, kind of your own eternity uh, into your interior spaces. Um, being present in, in that uh, activity or inactivity, um, so important, right? Um, you know, and I think that, uh, just being able to experience it, not look for anything from it, you know, so often I do talk about like, oh, you should be taking notes and writing, you know, um, down your dreams and these kinds of things. Um, and here we have a TT visit. Um, but sometimes we just need to get in there and, and um, take those naps and have those daydreams and visions and, um, you know, traveling through our own interior space. And so, um, you know, don't take notes on this one. Just let it happen. Let it flow naturally. Um, I think that's where we're at with that. And so, um, with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. If you'd be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. And as you know, the algorithm kind of decides everything about everything. And so, um, we like to make it happy with things like liking the video, sharing, the readings on other social media platforms and watching the readings from the beginning to the end. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. And if you want to leave a comment, please do. I read all of them and they mean so much to me. So, uh, Gemini, I thank you. I thank you. I love you. And we will talk very soon. And TT says she loves you too. She's purring very loudly for you. I'll just let her do that for a minute so you can hear her. I know a lot of you like to hear the cats. <laughs>